but the chief priest consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death. Because that by reason of him, many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus. And when it says they went away, means it went away from what was traditional to them and they believed on Jesus Christ. Just for a little background sake, Lazarus and his sisters Mary and Martha, they were some of Jesus' best friends. And the Bible says, I believe on more than one occasion, Brother Robbie, that uh, Jesus loved them. There was a strong platonic friendship between Mary, Martha, Lazarus, and Jesus. John 11 and 4 says, when Jesus heard that, which is Lazarus is sick. Messages come that Lazarus is sick. And when Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. The point here is that the glorifying of Jesus Christ was indeed present for Lazarus' resurrection. There's nobody that can dispute or doubt that when Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth, Mary wasn't saying, Lazarus, come forth. Martha wasn't saying, Lazarus, come forth. None of the rest of their friends were. None of the disciples did. But when Jesus showed up and said, Lazarus, come forth, there is no doubt that glory was manifest in Him. But my point and my message and the main thought of this today is that the glory of God would be more profoundly and eternally manifest in the faith that was given birth to at Lazarus' tomb than was, in fact, the resurrection itself. Because it was a desire of God to see faith built in them that He truly could do anything. Anything. So Jesus was called. He was troubled. He loved Lazarus. He loved him so much that I, I got to thinking as I read this and I, I read the footnotes in the Apostolic Study Bible. How many of you read your Apostolic Study Bibles and enjoy them? There's some tremendous, tremendous notes and helpful things at the bottom. But I realized that Bethany, where Jesus was, or where Lazarus was, that Jesus, however it was, was all of about two miles from where Lazarus was. And I realized, and, and those of you that are planning to go with us, Lord willing, next year, that it was just on the east side of the Mount of Olives on the Jericho Road. And once again, I read something in the Bible that I've now seen for myself. And in fact, you can, but for one hill... You could see Jerusalem from where Lazarus was. But Jesus waited two days. Everybody say waited two days. That ain't how it works. If somebody calls you up on the phone and tells you, well, you just say for instance, Sister Sharon's been babysitting for her grandchildren, and I'm sure that they all enjoy that. But she's in Jackson. It's a lot further away than Bethany was from Jerusalem. But if Sister Stacy calls Sister Sharon Tuesday morning, not this week, but when y'all get done off vacation, my story's got to stay with the thing. And Sister Stacy calls and says, Sharon, Brother David just fell out at work. I promise you, she's going to say, can't get there for two days. You following me? But instead, she's going to call John, Katie, one of y'all get home. Call a neighbor. If the meter man's in the front yard, get in here and watch these kids. Call the police. Or as a last resort, load them up and bring them with you. Yeah. But she would be making movement to come right then. But Jesus, somebody sent word. Two miles away to Jesus, Lazarus is sick. Well, everybody knows what business Jesus is in, right? Somebody sick comes in contact with Jesus, there's a good chance they're going to get healed. So Jesus loved him. 
so much and thought so much of him that he hung around where he was at for two more days. After proclaiming that this sickness is not unto death. What does this say to us with regard to the power of faith coupled with the fruit of the Spirit? We have a fleshly mentality of how we react when we hear of an emergency, and we'll all do it. But what does it say to us that Jesus Christ, God Almighty, declares this sickness is not unto death, then waits two more days? What does it declare to us with regard of the fruit of the Spirit, which is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Long-suffering, obviously, is patience. So what does it say to us with regard to the power of faith when it's coupled with the fruit of the Spirit? Jesus, who knows the beginning from the end, who is God manifest in flesh, Brother Justin, He does not have to get in a hurry. Why? Why does Jesus not have to worry about getting in a hurry? Come on, think about this just for a minute. There was a guy one time named Jairus that he came got Jesus and said, my little 12 year old girl's near about dead. So Jesus and this crowd start following him. And somewhere in the middle of that crowd, there's this little lady who's had an issue of blood 12 years. And she forces her way through the crowd. I mean, it had to be that way. She touches the hem of his garment, Brother David. And virtue goes out of the Lord who is on his way to heal a sick little girl. And you know what Jesus did? Stopped. I forgot to tell you the title of my message today. Fireworks Faith. And you're going to find out where it came from in just a minute. I already had the thought. But you're going to find out where it came from in just a minute. So brother David, the deal is, Jesus knows who he is and what power he operates under. So Jairus' friends, they come to meet him while Jesus has stopped fooling around with this other lady. And they say, don't bother him no more. She's not just sick, she's dead. And the Lord turned to Jairus, who you know what he's got to be thinking. Come on. We got enough flesh in us. What are you thinking? Man, if you hadn't stopped, if you hadn't stopped and took care of her, you'd have got there in time. But now she's dead. But Jesus turned to Jairus and said some of the most beautiful and powerful words in Scripture, Be not afraid, only believe. Man, how can you do that? How can you do that when you've just got news that punches you right in the gut till there's the winds all out of you? Jesus said, so Jesus waits two days. And then he goes to check on Lazarus. What does that do for us? I really feel like somebody needs to hear this this morning. It teaches patience. I saw yesterday, I saw yesterday, we sat there, it might have been 15 seconds, and I'm probably stretching it a little, but there were two people coming out of the ATM drive out here on 61 Highway, and they stopped to talk. Well, there's a car out there on the road wanting to turn in there. I saw them stop. Then I stopped, and somehow in that 15 seconds, the car in front of me, I couldn't tell you what they was doing, because I really don't know. But whatever they did really upset the old boy coming out of the deal. But my point is, come on, think about it. You're in Walmart. 
You're in Walmart and you and you've got like seven things in your buggy. And somebody's going through the super quick, duper fast lane. You're only supposed to have ten and under, and they got twelve. Come on, don't tell me you didn't count. <laughs> and you back it up, turn it around, and run over and shove it in another lane. Can't believe they took twelve items to the ten item lane. <laughs> Which is look at here. Okay, ding, 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 ten times. Everybody all together, hold your breath. Let's do two more. Boom, boom. It's over. I'm not waiting. I'm not, I'm not waiting. Come on, come on. If them, if them shopping carts had a blinker on them, I'd have burned up every blinker in every one of them because I'll pull through and turn to up, nope, 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 too long, too long, too much junk. You know, when you see the pile over top of their head, you probably don't want to go in that lane. So we're so impatient. So the Lord's got to teach them something. When you're operating by faith in the Holy Ghost, two days ain't nothing for what's about to happen. This te- He's teaching them patience, which is undergirded by faith. The Bible says, in your patience, possess ye your souls. Which means that patience is simply under the influence of the Spirit, an exhibition of control over yourself. It is a a manifestation that I'm controlling me through the influence of the Spirit. Because impatience is simply a manifestation of a lack of self-control Because whatever's got you agitated now controls you. Out at the ATM, two strangers, one of them is made angry, mad, probably throwing up some signs and stuff. (laughs) Saying some bad words because they got held up between 10 and 15 seconds. And now a total stranger has taken control over you. You Say, how do you know all that? Because I sat there about eight of them seconds and I was already getting mad. (laughs) When faith in God is present, ten minutes or ten years... We, we read an article, I think it was in the last Herald, about this lady that fasted two days a week for like 30 years. Oh, man. Fasted like two days a week for 30 years for her son to be, her lost son to be saved. I'm talking about faith in God. And when faith in God is present, He's in control. And not my situation is in control. I should have got a lot of amens, either that or I should have got a lot of, oh, get off my toes. Can I get an amen? (laughs) After the waiting period, Jesus says, let's go wake Lazarus up. (laughs) How many of you are ever, ever reading about the disciples and you wonder if some of them's elevator goes plumb to the top? Because they sure say some goofy stuff back to the Lord sometimes. The Lord says, let's go wake Lazarus up. And the disciples said, hey, if he's asleep and he's sick, we don't need to bother him. Because everybody knows sleep makes you sick and get better. That's in the Bible. You can read it if you'd like to. John chapter number 11. The disciples are unaware that Lazarus is dead, so they resist the idea. Because anybody knows that sleep is good for recovery. John 11 and 14 says, Then Jesus said unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. At 15, look here. And I'm glad. That's how the next one starts off. And I'm glad for your sakes that I was not there. To the intent ye may believe.
I don't know if we're aware of it or not, but we like miracles, we like signs and wonders. We like people getting repentant of their sins, getting baptized in Jesus' name, getting filled with the Holy Ghost evidence by speaking in other tongues. We like to dance, we like to shout, we like to sing good songs. We like to, you know, dress up at Easter and dress up at Christmas and have an egg hunt and have a few dinners. And we like to have all the whole package that comes with church. But without faith, none of it means anything. Without faith, we're just a, 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 another form of a country club or a dance hall. They turn this into a stage. Because faith is what takes us from this realm into a heavenly realm, a spiritual realm. And I'm glad for your sakes because what's about to happen in your lives is going to give birth to a faith that is going to propel you into an arena you never imagined you being in. The crucial main point of this miracle, it wasn't so Jesus could show out. It wasn't so Jesus could show off. It wasn't so Jesus could let him know once again that everything, even death, is subject to him. But it was to build their faith into a place where they said, He can do anything. Jesus arrived, and as he gets there, Martha, who if you study out the, the, the relationship here, Martha is the doer, Martha is impetuous, Martha is, you know, a jump the gun kind of a gal. And she runs out and meets Jesus and falls down and says very quickly, if you would have got here in time, you'd have healed my brother of that sickness. Then they go on to have a little dialogue, but then a little further along, Jesus runs into Mary. And guess what Mary says? She runs and falls down at his feet and says, If you'd have got here a little earlier, my brother would have been healed. And it's an expression of faith. Do you see that? They both had faith that if Jesus would have got there before Lazarus died, he could have healed him. Right? You see that? It is faith. It's limited, but it's faith. Jesus then asked him, said, where have you laid him at? Take me to the place. And then I'm not going to preach about it this morning. I've got an entire message where I use the shortest text in the Bible. John 11 and 35. One every Sunday school kid who's ever been asked to memorize a verse knows John 11 35. Jesus wept. When you read the story in its entirety, you understand that Jesus is not weeping because Lazarus is dead. Jesus is weeping because of what Martha, Mary, and Lazarus had to go through in order for the people's faith to be built. He's not weeping because he's dead, Brother Pete, because he knows here in a few minutes. He's coming out. That's been the plan all along. But the sickness, but the pain, but the agony that they had to go through. And then the agony of loss for his two sisters. And then even Jesus seeing Mary and Martha doubting him and doubting his, his concern for them. The entire gamut of emotions is run and Jesus weeps. And then, <laughs> then Jesus says, take the stone away. And Martha says, what? What did Martha say? Hold on a minute! You don't understand. Bubby's been in there four days. He's already breaking down. He stinks by now. It's a hot place over a hot, dry climate. You don't keep the dead out for a few days. You put them in the ground as quick as you can. Wait a minute, Lord. He's been dead for four days by now. He stinks. John 11 and 40. Jesus said, Jesus said unto her, Didn't I tell you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? I don't know if they were expecting a beautiful bouquet or whatever laid at the tomb of Lazarus. But Jesus had big plans showing up at Lazarus' tomb and He told them, Just believe. Y'all remember that chorus we used to sing? 
I had a, a crazy picture in my mind every time we would sing it. And y'all may have to help me because it's been a long time. Uh, only believe. Only believe. All things are possible. Only believe. Y'all remember that? Anybody remember that? We used to sing it quite often. I about did it this morning. You're probably thankful that I didn't, but I, I about did. But if you just believe, you would have seen the glory of God. Then you, you, need, you need to really read this when you go home. But they rolled away the stone. And the Bible said Jesus lifted up his eyes and began to pray. And he, his prayer is, I'm praying for their benefit. Because the intention of all of this is that they would believe. Then he cried with a loud voice. The Bible says he cried with a loud voice. Lazarus! Come forth. And verse 44 says, And he that was dead came forth. Bam. Many then came to believe on Jesus Christ. Many then came, they were drawn because they had heard that Lazarus was raised from the dead. After being buried four days. But to say just as many as came to believe on Jesus Christ, also many searched for a way to discredit Him. Verse 47, they said, you don't have to turn there because I'm just going to buzz through them. Verse 47, they said, what are we going to do? you got to do something. This man does too many miracles. There's too much good, <laughs> too much good stuff happening where Jesus is. He's healing the sick. Raising the dead, doing all. We got to put a stop to it. Come on, are y'all not seeing the craziness? That's why Jesus wants faith to be built. That's why Jesus is interested. The intention is that you might have faith. What are we going to do? This man does many miracles. In 48, they said, if we don't do something, if we don't do something, Everybody's going to be believing in Him before He gets done. And verse 53 says, From that day forward, they counseled together to put Jesus to death. What is it when people are operating from a carnal standpoint that they rob so many people of blessings and so many people of, of an experience that is unparalleled here on earth simply because a relationship with Jesus Christ doesn't line up to what you think it might ought to line up to. Brother David, these were the same people that they read the Bible every service. They, they read the Scriptures every seven years. They read the incomplete Bible out loud. Boy, I'd be yawning like a champion trying to read the whole Bible out loud. It was the fulfillment of the Messiah had come. The chosen one. God Himself manifests the likeness of sinful flesh. And He's... Mercy. He's healing people. He's delivering people. And now to put the cherry on top of the Sunday, He has showed up at Bethany and said, Lazarus, come forth. And He comes out of the grave. <laughs> Bouncing in grave clothes. And Jesus said, loose him and let him go. And when he took the grave clothes off, he's alive. And all they can think about is they've got to shut him up. Got to stop him. Got to slow him down. If you're a Holy Ghost filled, and the devil ain't trying to stop you, it's because you ain't causing him no problems. So instead of us getting all tore up when the enemy comes against us, we've got to cling to the Word of God as I preach Wednesday night. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against it. That's why you got to have something that's real inside of you. This is not just to shake a hand and, and say, I believe and accept Him as my personal Savior. But when I surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and the power of the Holy Ghost filled me from the top of my head to the sole of my feet, uh, I can now stand with assurance uh, and power and faith and demonstration. Yeah. 
Instead, they decided there ain't but one solution. There ain't but one thing we can do. We've got to kill him. I don't know if you're aware or not. Maybe you're not understanding or not. But, but this ain't like six guys talking over a beer at the local tavern. This ain't some rednecks out in the middle of the woods at the deer camp. You do know this is the leaders of the church that have decided we've got to stop Jesus. Why? Why is it? Why is it they got to stop him and they're so adamant about it that they start conniving to kill him? They're conniving to commit murder. John 12 and 9, again, our text. Much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there. And they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might see Lazarus also, who him had raised from the dead. But the chief priests consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death. Do you all not see the irony in that? <laughs> He's done been there. <laughs> huh? And you know what, Brother Billy? How crazy would it have been if they go kill that rascal <laughs> and Jesus shows back up? <laughs> It says, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> what good is it going to do to kill Lazarus? They don't even get it. Let me tell you a sign of spiritual maturity. When you stop getting mad at people's goofiness and you start feeling sorry for them. And you start having compassion for them. Because they had no idea. They had no idea. I remember a skit that was done over on the other side. Where several people dressed up from different walks of life. And there was a song they sang at the end of it. it said, let them know. Let them know. Tell them Jesus loved them so. He loved them so much. That to Calvary he would go. I feel the Spirit of the Lord in here. The chief priest consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death. But that's, listen to me right now. I want you, you got to receive this. It was too late. I said it was too late. They could kill Lazarus a thousand more times. But they couldn't do anything to the faith that was manifested when Jesus spoke Lazarus come forth and he came out it wasn't cause Lazarus was some great person that, the, that he needed to keep on living it was so that faith would be built verse 11 because that by reason of him of Lazarus many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus Christ Everybody that I've talked to that knows anything about fireworks, we've been down in Portageville for three years. I'm telling you why I'm preaching this message this morning. No, no, this is an illustration for this message this morning. We're set up out of town just a little bit, Brother David. Not on the main drag, not on the main thoroughfare. Our signs keep blowing over. I'm not going to tell you everything we made. It, it'd blow your mind if I told you everything that happened. But the first year I was told, if you clear a couple thousand dollars, that's an amazing blessing. And we did. <laughs> the second year I ordered about double what we did before, give or take. I had to make three more trips to go get more. This year, I ordered several thousand dollars more. 